At what point is a large smartphone no longer a phone, but rather a small tablet? That's a boundary that Samsung has been pushing for the better part of two years, and it's showing no signs of slowing down or abandoning the so-called phablet market. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the Galaxy Mega 6.3. As if the name wasn't a dead giveaway, the Galaxy Mega is a huge phone. It's the first thing you'll notice once you see the phone in person. The second thing you will notice is that it looks almost exactly like a much larger Galaxy S4. It features the same plastic trim around the edges, the same dot pattern on the hyperglazed plastic on the back and beneath the glass on the front, and the same camera hump around back with the LED flash beneath. The difference here, obviously, is size. It measures 167.6mm tall, 88mm wide, and 8mm thick. For reference, the Galaxy Note 2 is only 151.1mm tall, 80.5mm wide, and 9.4mm thick. Although the Mega 6.3 weighs in at a hefty 199 grams, it feels relatively lightweight, especially for its size. Much of that weight is the giant 3200mAh battery. If you've been turned off by Samsung's penchant for lightweight plastics, the Galaxy Mega will be no different. It strictly adheres to Samsung's current design language, and does not deviate even the slightest bit from the design shown in the Galaxy Note 8 or the Galaxy S4. While this pocket-stretching phone pushes the boundary of what is sensible to carry, its specifications won't blow anyone away. Samsung did not build this phone to cannibalize its Galaxy S and Galaxy Note brands. Instead, it's been given a brand of its own, and thus does not feature the most impressive specifications. It bears a 1.7 GHz dual-core Snapdragon 400 chip, 1.5 GB of RAM, 8 or 16 GB of built-in storage paired with a microSD card slot, an 8 megapixel primary camera, and the now standard subset of connectivity, Wi-Fi BGN AC, NFC, LTE, and or HSPA+, and infrared. Lastly, the 6.3-inch display is hardly the best display on the market. Unlike most Samsung smartphones, the Mega does not feature a Super AMOLED display. Instead, it's a TFT LCD panel with a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels, for a total pixel density of 233 ppi. As you would expect, beside a smaller, more dense display, like the 4.7-inch 1080p SLCD3 display on the HTC One, videos and images are not nearly as crisp. In fact, the edges of the icons on the home screen look fuzzy. That said, large text looks fairly sharp. The display offers wide viewing angles, but the colors are not nearly as saturated as what you will find on other Samsung devices using OLED displays. It's not even as vibrant as many other LCD panels we've seen, but it's bright and the added size is what truly matters with this phone. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 runs the latest version of Android, version 4.2.2 beneath the latest TouchWiz iteration. If you've used a Samsung smartphone for any length of time in the past two years, you'll feel right at home on the Mega 6.3. The notification shade looks virtually the same as the Galaxy S3s or the Note 2s. The icons, home screens, widgets, and application drawer all look the same. But since it's running on Jelly Bean 4.2, there are some added features such as lock screen widgets, daydream mode, and a quick settings page accessible by a two-finger swipe down from the top of the display. And many of Samsung's features we have come to expect are present, such as multi-window, S-voice, motion controls, S-memo, a custom photo gallery, and much more. However, it's important to note that this version of TouchWiz is not the full-blown TouchWiz you will find on the Galaxy S4. You will find AirView, the ability to preview select content by hovering your finger over various things. And, like on the S4, the light will follow your hovering finger around the lock screen. You will also see the new tab layout if you take a quick trip to the settings application. There, you may also notice there are several things missing, such as Air Gesture, Smart Pulse, Smart Rotation, or Smart Scroll. It's also missing dual camera and drama shot in the camera app, and many more features. There are also several built-in apps missing, like S Health. More or less, the Galaxy Mega 6.3 offers the same touch whiz we're all used to by now, atop the latest version of Jelly Bean. Instead of new smart features, Samsung has kept this version of touch whiz fairly streamlined with previous versions, which shows us exactly how the company is prioritizing and showing favoritism towards its hero device, the Galaxy S4. The chipset in the Galaxy Mega 6.3 isn't the fastest chip around. It's a 1.7 GHz dual-core Crate CPU paired with an Adreno 305 GPU to make the Snapdragon 400 chipset, and in normal day-to-day -day usage, it holds up pretty well. As per usual, with a TouchWiz device, there is some intermittent lag and stuttering, and thanks to S-Voice, there is a short pause that occurs when you press the home button. Disable the double-press shortcut in S-Voice settings and you will immediately notice a serious improvement when exiting apps. 
Naturally, its scores in synthetic benchmark tests weren't the greatest. We've seen much higher scores and much lower scores. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 will eventually come with LTE capabilities, but our model is limited to HSPA Plus connectivity, and we've been running it on AT&T here in the Charlotte metro area for several days. And all the speed tests so far have been in the same ballpark, around 6.5 megabits per second down and 1.5 megabits per second up. Call quality has been above average. Callers were crisp, clear, and exceptionally loud. There are even software toggles that can improve the sound quality based on individual use cases. We also held enough signal to perform and hold calls in spotty areas. Some places we've even been disconnected with other phones on AT&T. With a 3200 mAh battery tucked inside, we figured the Galaxy Mega 6.3 would offer similar battery life to the Galaxy Note 2, but we hadn't taken into account the additional battery munching display, and it makes a noticeable impact on the battery life. Overall, we'd say the stamina on this device is average, which is disappointing considering the additional battery capacity. As you would imagine, when the display is on, especially at full brightness, you can watch the battery percentage slip away by the minute. The camera around back is an 8 megapixel camera, and considering the Galaxy S3 and Note 2 offered some of the best 8 megapixel cameras on the Android platform, we set our expectations pretty high for the Mega 6.3's image sensing. In a nutshell, the performance of the Mega 6.3's camera isn't terribly impressive, but we're not convinced it isn't a lack of software optimization. Images turn out great in terms of clarity, color reproduction, and contrast. Low light performance isn't particularly noteworthy but the real problem is auto exposure. The camera is very quick to blow out whites and it also has some trouble quickly autofocusing. To sum things up, we'd be hard pressed to say the Galaxy Mega 6.3 is destined to be a popular smartphone. It definitely turns some heads and it makes a great conversation piece. We've even had many passersby extremely interested in such a large phone, but its size makes it a tight fit in pockets, even in loose jeans and shorts, and it forces users to use the phone two handed in most scenarios. It's a great thing if you're after additional display space that still fits in your pocket, a smartphone that can play the part of a small tablet and a smartphone, and for that, we love it. But this smartphone is clearly not for everyone. We give the Galaxy Mega 6.3 an 8 out of 10. That's going to wrap up this review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe and follow us in all the typical places. Before we go, we'd like to give a final thanks to our friends at Negri Electronics for lending us a Galaxy Mega 6.3 for this review. As always, I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you soon.